I've been 3D printing for years now and I got my first printer as a tool to help me build other things like electronic enclosures, custom brackets and parts for my projects. But when I see what's popular with 3D printing, a lot of it is models and toys, but I've seen less of the practical and functional side of 3D printing. So in this video, I wanted to show you a few of the practical 3D prints I've designed to help me solve a problem and potentially save a bit of money along the way. Hopefully I can show you that creating your own models isn't that hard and inspire some of you to learn CAD if you haven't done already. It has never been easier to learn modeling with all the free tools available like Fusion and Onshape and YouTube tutorials. When I upgraded my cameras, the new cameras wouldn't fit on a standard junction box due to their larger size. But also now they have an ethernet cable with a large weatherproof connector that won't fit in normal junction boxes. The wall mount adapters for this camera aren't all that cheap or readily available in my country, so I decided to print my own. After a few iterations, I had something that works perfectly and doesn't look too bad either. I printed it in ABS to hopefully withstand the outdoor elements and added threaded inserts to attach the camera. For this model, I used default ABS print settings like normal, as I generally find default settings are more than strong enough. If the print breaks, I can always go back and print it again with more infill and walls or use a stronger material. There's no need to over-engineer things. It's been installed now for over a year with no issues. And the advantage of 3D printing is now that I've made one design, I've been able to print more as needed when I've upgraded cameras. I've been trying to use a robot in the bedroom, but it's just too thick and won't fit under my bed. So I decided to 3D print some pucks that clip onto the bed feet and raise the bed up just a few centimetres so the robot can vacuum under my bed. I also added some flat sides to the print as previously the robot would ride up the curved feet and get stuck. Now it can easily detect the feet without getting stuck. This was printed with PLA in default settings. It's a basic print but now things don't get quite so dirty in the bedroom. In the previous video, a lot of you asked for me to show you how I designed functional 3D prints. And as Bamboo Lab is sponsoring this video and sent me their A1 printer to try out, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to go through how I designed functional 3D prints and show off the Bamboo Lab A1 at the same time. Earlier this year, I installed a UPS in my network rack and the support brackets were too long for my small rack. So it's just been resting on some plywood until now. So I'm going to design and print some brackets on my A1 and show you how I do it. For this model, I already have a rough idea of what I need, so I'm going to start by measuring the profile of the rack, the position of the UPS in the rack, and any dimensions that will be useful when modeling. Please excuse the crudity of this drawing, I didn't have time to draw it to scale or paint it. I want this bracket to click right into the metal channel on the rack, so I'm only modeling and printing a small part of the bracket first to make sure it fits before I go any further. This is where the Bamboo Lab A1 really shines, not only did it take me less than 30 minutes to get all set up, there's nothing I need to do, no bed leveling, no calibration. I just slice the model and click print and in 10 to 15 minutes I have my prototype that I can test and iterate on. And with the AMS unit, I don't even have to load or unload filament, I just leave my most used filaments installed and I can pick what color I want from a drop down menu before printing. Printing and iterating fast was something I could never do with my old printers as they were too slow. Now with my A1 and P1S, I regularly print small sections or parts of a model to make sure it fits before printing the final model. This may seem wasteful, printing small parts that you'll only use briefly, but in the long run you'll save filament and time if you don't have to reprint complete models when you make a minor mistake. Now that I knew the sizing was right, I modeled a complete cross section of the bracket so I could test the spacing between the rack and the UPS. I then had the idea to add a small clip to the top of the bracket to hold it on the rack more securely. So I made a few more prototypes to get the sizing just right to give that satisfying click into place. Once I was happy with all the prototypes, I modeled a final design so I could print it. Once it was printed, I removed the supports from the print and clicked it into place. The bracket fits perfectly maybe too perfectly, as it's a bit of a tight fit, but I'm not taking the UPS in and out a lot, so it won't be an issue. With all of the weight of the UPS going down through the bracket, it actually locks it into place, 
and the clips on the side are only there to hold the bracket when the UPS is removed. If they do break or I have an issue, I did leave some screw holes on the side to attach it to the rack if needed. As with most of my prints, I printed this with Bamboo Lab Basic PLA and with five walls. In hindsight, two walls would have been strong enough. I see a lot of people online using fancy filaments, but I reckon in most cases Basic PLA is strong enough and it's almost overkill for this print. Before I had a Bamboo Lab printer, I spent most of my time working on a 3D printer, not printing. In the past, I've had to heavily customize my 3D printers to get them to work. I've built my own hot ends, had to gather parts, built custom temperature controlled enclosures, and even built my own app to control it all. And now I don't have to worry about any of that. There's no complex setup, no fine tuning. It just works right out of the box. So I'd like to thank Bamboo Lab for sponsoring this video and sending me their A1 combo to try out. It's been a game changer for me. Find out more in the link in the description. I wanted to mount my doorbell chime on the wall where there's an existing network outlet. These doorbells already come with the wall mounts, but it would have required me to make a big hole in my wall that I'd have to fix later. So I repurposed one of my existing designs from the last video to create a custom mount. I started by modeling the doorbell in Fusion 360 so I could create a custom mount using my existing wall plate. Again, it's printed in PLA with default settings and supports. Even though I can't recess it into the wall as much as I would like, it works perfectly. And the best part is, if I ever need to remove it, I can always just install the original networking outlet at any time. It's so nice to modify an existing design and with a click of a button, you have something completely new. I keep losing my knob for my audio mixer. So instead of tracking down and buying new ones, I quickly modeled and printed my own. It was a really quick and simple print. So I decided to overcomplicate things again and design two more styles that connect between two sliders to make them one. This way I can mix two channels as one without having to worry about getting the wrong audio levels. I'm not even sure if you can buy anything like this. So it's a great example of how you can use a 3D printer to personalize something you already own. At my previous house, I had to set up my old 3D printer in a laundry closet, and I wanted to get better ventilation. There was already an extractor fan there, but there was no easy way to connect a duct to it. So I modeled an exact copy of the extractor fan's faceplate, then added a mounting point for the air duct. All I needed to do was remove the faceplate and install my own. It clips into place and uses all the same screws, so there's no physical damage to the fan. When I moved out, I reinstalled the original faceplate with no evidence that anything had changed. I originally printed this in PLA, but I think a more heat resistant material would have been much better if I was going to do this again in the future. I have a spotlight in my garden that lights up my house numbers to make it easier to see them at night, but the beam is too wide and was shining on my security camera. So I designed a custom light guide that mounts onto the spotlight and focuses the beam on the house numbers and avoids glare in my camera. When I modeled it, I designed the grid manually. Not only did this take a long time to design, but it also took forever to print. In hindsight, I should have just modeled it using a solid cylinder and then used Bamboo Studios modifiers to print it without top and bottom layers and then use grid infill to form the grid instead of manually designing it. Then would have been much easier to make changes to the grid without making major design changes. It's been printed in ABS and it's been outside for over a year with no issues. I wanted to add a light sensor to Home Assistant to turn on and off my outside lights at night and trigger other automations. So I designed a custom housing for a light sensor that mounts to my control panel. The sensor I wanted to use didn't come with any mounting points or weather sealing. So I created a relatively simple design that clamps the sensor to the base with three screws and then seals the sensor from the elements while providing mounting points. I also filled it with silicon for good measure. Unfortunately, the location I mounted it was more shaded than expected, so I made some quick modifications to the bracket and mounted another sensor to the tip of my deck. So they are just a few of the functional 3D prints I've designed and actually use every day, and hopefully have inspired you to make something yourself. This video is a little different to my normal videos, but I try and create functional and practical 3D prints in all of my videos, so subscribe if you want to see more functional 3D prints. If you want to print any of these models, I have the files linked in the video description. Let me know what you think, I'm always super keen for feedback. 
If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. See you in the next one.